Hello, everybody. Happy day 23 of our 30 day shadow work challenge. We are literally almost there. You guys are rock stars. You're, you're, you're incredible. And I am so proud of each and every one of you for sticking with this. Um, our signal group is popping. Uh, before we get to the topic at hand, I will let you guys know that yes, 100%, I am already working on a 60 day challenge that we will most likely start on January 1, New Year Day, for 60 days. Now, I will let you guys know once I have the template done so that in the month of December, you can email me like you did for this challenge to receive the 60 days. Now, the 60 days will be a little bit different than the 30 days. Some of the, the um, bigger challenges will be a little bit more spread out because it is 60 days. I will also be giving a more of a variety of workouts for people uh, simply because I know that you guys who are doing the 30 day challenge, once you keep up with the work in December, your fitness level is going to be at a higher point. And for people who are brand new and haven't been doing the 30 day challenge and want to do it in, in, um, in January, do a new challenge, they're not going to be able to do the work at this point that you are able to do. So I'm going to give a variety and I'm going to explain it. Like if you are at this level, try this. If you're at this level, try that. And so that you have more of a variety to choose from. During the 60-day challenge, I'm also going to be following the traditional yoga schedule like we kind of did with a 30-day challenge with rest days and what days we take off of exercise. So we are going to continue to honor Saturday as the rest day because that is the day of Saturn or the day of karma or reflecting on your work. But we will also be taking moon days off as well. So you'll get two extra days a month that are no exercise that will be on full moon and new moon and part of the challenge is going to be you learning about the power of the moon and i know that's going to trigger some people who are still slightly programmed by the by the infiltrators into the truther community y'all god created the moon we are a part of part of nature just as the moon is a part of nature and the moon does affect our bodies it does affect us and so we're going to start to look at that new moon and full moon have two different energies associated with them this is really important for women, especially because we follow the moon. That's why we have a monthly cycle. Men follow the sun. So they have a three month cycle. So if every three months your boyfriend or your husband gets kind of bitchy, they're on their period. That's what's happening. So, so we just have it. That's where we get the word month from is the moon. Monday is the day of the moon. So these is very important elements that we start to study because knowledge is power and knowledge protects. All right, I'm gonna answer some of your questions now, some questions people have had. Speaking of periods, one person asked yesterday why specifically we don't um, work out or practice yoga on our cycle. So typically this is the first day or two or three, depending on the woman that you take off of your cycle. And the reason is, is because it has nothing to do with you being dirty or any bullshit like that. It's actually quite the opposite. It's actually in reverence to the female body that we take. We call it a ladies holiday in, in yoga because you get to be pampered during that time. My teacher sends his wife to the spa when she's on her period. Let me tell you, no man in the Western world <laughs> that I've dated has ever sent me to the spa on my period. So <laughs> I might have to make that, that happen eventually that when I go on my period, I get sent to the spa, right? <laughs> to be pampered and taken care of. So basically it goes back down to the cycle of energy. So even though I'm saying that women are aponic, every human being carries both the feminine and the masculine energy within them. Again, that comes back to the two nostrils, right? The left side, is feminine the right side is masculine so we carry these two two cycles of energy within our bodies however women your biological makeup is aponic again that's why we follow the moon the the symbol for the aponic or downward flowing energy is the moon the symbol for pranic or upward flowing energy is the sun men are pranic we are aponic men are pranic yin yang right and we see that in our bodies too that's why a man's body they have very, very narrow hips. They kind of go straight, 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 and they get bigger up top. Like they have the big, sexy, strong arms, right? Big, sexy chest, or at least I think so, because I'm a straight woman. You know, that's, that's the pranic. Their arms are strong. They can carry things. They can hunt, even though we shouldn't be hunting, in my opinion. They can provide. They can, they can defend, right, their family. Yeah? 
That's the pranic rising energy. Women, on the other hand, are a panic, the moon, the yin, the yang. So look at a woman's body. Women are smaller up top, but stronger, but bigger. They, they have hips, right? We're not linear. Our hips don't go like this. They go like that. That's the moon cycle, the reciprocal cycle of the moon. And so um, when we go on our periods, though, our body is in full aponic push. The body, the, the female body, it's not just the uterus that's being affected by your period, right? We all know this as women. Our whole body is affected by our period. We swell. We get headaches sometimes. A lot of people have cramps that go into their lower back. It's because your body at this point, because there was no insemination, because there was no fertilized egg, the uterus now has a responsibility to do, and that is to get rid of the lining. So we know for a woman, even though we call it a period, we call it blood, it's only, it's actually a little bit of blood. Most of that is just the lining of the uterus, okay? That's coming out of the uterus. And this is a beautiful thing because once it's out, the body can, the uterus can start to rebuild the lining. So it's fresh in case there is fertilization within the next month. That's amazing that the, the female body does that once, once a month, right? in order to to procreate, to create life, to open the portal up. And so when we're on our cycles, again, our body is in a complete aponic state. For example, if you were to try to practice, you would have a really hard time with molabunda because molabunda is a pulling up, right? And so we want to observe that and let the body, the female's body rest so that it's not messed with. You know, if you're on your yoga mat and you're practicing on your period, your body's trying to be a panic, but the practice itself is pranic. So the body's trying to pull everything down and out while you're telling it to also pull up at the same time. And so there's this tug of war happening. And I will tell you, in my late 20s, early 30s, I used to practice through my period. I would just practice through my period. I didn't want to take the, the days off. And I lost my period. I literally lost my period and it took me a while to get my period back. I had to, my, 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 my uterus was a little bit twisted at that time too. So I was going through acupuncture, all sorts of stuff. And I had to start taking two or three days off a month around the moon cycle. I knew I'm, I know I'm a full moon or I know my cycle comes around the full moon. So I started taking a few days off to get my cycle, to get my body to kick back into gear. And so we know for women, if a woman loses her period before she's at the age where it's okay to lose your period, we know that that's bad for the health because that's your body, right? That's your hormones. And so that's why we honor that. Um, I still, I, I honor it. My, I take like the first day or two off. So basically the, the days, so some women have like a five day cycle. Literally, we only want to take the days off where your uterus is contracting. So for the first two to three days is when your uterus is actually contracting. So that's the cramps that you get. You can feel it. Women know, we know when that's happening. Um, that's the heaviest of the cycle. But for other, but if you have a five day cycle, usually the last two or three days, it's just residual stuff coming out. So it's not really an aponic flow. It's just the, the extra stuff coming out, right? I know that sounds gross, but we're all adults here. Um, and so we just want to take off the days where the uterus is actually contracting. So once I got my period back and started working with the ladies holiday schedule, my periods only last two to three days anyway right? By the third day, I'm done, like nothing. So, um, so I got my period in a better rhythm as it is. My cramps are not that bad. I have like the first day I'll have like a lot of cramping, but then after that, I'm pretty good. And so if you work with nature, if you actually work with your body and you work with the rhythm of nature, it works in your benefit. Yeah. Kind of like the dosha system. If you're actually working with the energy of your disposition, you're going to be better off. Yeah. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, men, unfortunately, I know all of my, my guy friends in this practice get upset because men don't have ladies holidays. <laughs> um, they have to keep going because in their, in their pranic cycle every three months, you know, they don't have a, their bodies just recalibrating. It's not detoxing anything. And so for a man, again, every three months, you might get a little bitchy. It's just your body recalibrating because you follow the cycle of the sun. The solar cycle is three months. So um, I hope that makes sense. Another question that came up yesterday that I actually, this was brilliant because I didn't even think to talk about this. And so I'm so glad to the person who commented about this. So the reason why, there's multiple reasons why we practice really early in the morning or like I've encouraged you, even if you're not practicing yoga, to work out really early in the morning. 
One of the reasons is because of, because of Brahma Murtha. So Brahma Murtha again is the time of God, and Brahma Murtha falls in the Vata time of morning. Now Vata time is being between two a.m. and six a.m. in the morning. Okay, it's the cerebral time of God. It's when the earth is the stillest, and Brahma Murtha falls in in that time. Now for different. Uh, areas of the world that the actual crux of Brahma Morta is going to be different because it it falls like in like 45 minutes of sunrise there's there's different there's different equations for where you're living in the world so just to make it simple for those who are new to this Brahma Morta falls within the Vata time and for those of you who are from the south you might be familiar with what um, our witchy friends in the south call the witching hour the witching hour happens between three and four o'clock in the morning and what the witching hour basically is is the same as brahma mortha or vata time so between two and six a.m usually between the three and four o'clock mark is when the day and night actually switch so in our matrix system we're told that at midnight that's when the date flips to the next day. So midnight to night will then all of a sudden be Thursday because today's Wednesday, right? But in nature, the day and night flip during Brahma Morta, all right, or right before Brahma Morta. So that is when the day flips. So midnight during in Eastern philosophy is not the actual flip into the next day. The flip into the next day happens between three and four o'clock in the morning and then right into Brahma Morta, which is the time of God. And if you're up between three and four o'clock in the morning, you can kind of feel it. Like there's a split second where you kind of feel the earth kind of flips. Yeah. Um, a lot of people talk about feeling that. And a lot of people will, will wake up right at that time. Like if you've ever woken up like at three 30 in the morning, just woken up out of the blue and you don't know why, and you lay down and go back to sleep or at like three seventeen, you wake up and you don't know why it's probably because your body felt the natural flip of the night the the last day to the next day the night to the day and then you just go back to sleep right and so brahma morta after that flip that's when brahma morta starts again brahma morta is time of god now again the day is it's very calm i had a friend or a not really a friend more of a um someone i knew just i used to teach at this yoga studio in in brookhaven a long time ago and i practiced early in the mornings but i taught some some later classes and there was a guy who had his own business next door and he didn't have his it was like it was like his office he didn't have clients really coming in so sometimes when he was dead he would come over and like chat with me while i was closing up the studio like after my class like closing everything out he would just kind of hang out with me which i appreciated because it would usually be dark outside and i think he was just looking out for my safety as a, as a woman by myself, but we would chat a lot and he was a big runner and he would, we would talk all the time because I would practice early, early, early in the morning before the sun was up. And he goes, he would go and run at like four o'clock in the morning before the sun was up. And we would talk about it all the time. And he would say, you know, when I grab my running shoes and I'm hit, hit the streets at 4 a.m., he's like, it's the most magical experience. He's like, nobody is awake. The city is so quiet. And it's just, it's just like, it's me and God. It's me and God out there. There is nothing. But me and God. And I thought, wow, that's 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 Brahma Morta. That's what he's experiencing. So at that time of day, everything is so freaking quiet. It's you and it's God. And that's it. That's Brahma Morta. Now, another thing too, in the Vata time of day, in the morning time of day, you are also a lot tighter. Okay. You're gonna notice this. Your body's not gonna be as open at four o'clock in the morning. Than it is at four o'clock in the afternoon hamstrings are going to be a little bit tight there's going to be a little bit less of, of a natural mo mobility in your body okay this is a good thing so what happens at night when you go into the rem stages of sleep is your body releases a chemical to kind of semi paralyze you in order for your um in order for the healing to take place in order for your body not to act out the dreams so that it can actually, the blood can actually heal your body. When we start to wake up in the morning, we still have a little bit of that chemical in our body. So that's why things feel a little bit tight and stiff, you know? We want to be at this place of total honesty when we come to our exercises, whether that's yoga bar or kickboxing, whatever it is. You want to be at a place of complete hum humility and vulnerability. And so catching the body, catching the psyche at that time of day, right when you've woken up, you're in Brahma Morta. It's very quiet outside. It's very quiet within you too. 
that's where we want to be when we come before God in our practice. And that's what we're doing, regardless of what your exercise you're doing. As my friend said, it's, it's him and God out there in the morning in Atlanta, Georgia, running at four o'clock. Right. And so in the Hatha Yoga Pitikapa, they even tell us in our yoga shalas, we should have the door really low so that we bow before God before coming into practice. And so when you're on your mat and you're tight and you're stiff, there's a certain level of honesty. There's a level of honesty that you have to have with yourself. The ego cannot get involved unless the only the only way the ego gets involved is if the ego says, you know what, I'm super tight in the morning, so I'm going to exercise in the afternoon because that's when I'm at my best. That's the ego. That's the ego. No, bring yourself to that place of humility and honesty in your practice, in your workout, whatever you're doing, where you are a little bit tight, where you can feel the resistance. Because that's the humility we need in order to really break through and to actually remove, die the death of the ego so that the full spirit can be in control. I hope that makes sense. If you, do, if you have more questions, ask me in the comment section below. But let's go ahead and look at today. So again, today is Wednesday, the 23rd. And as I said yesterday, when we re reviewed this yesterday, oh, I find it. Hold on one second. As I said yesterday, when I reviewed this yesterday, you are, um, last couple of days, you have been able to pick your exercise. But today you did kickboxing or yoga. And I said that yesterday because we do have Thanksgiving tomorrow here in the United States. And so I wanted you to start to learn how to, and I think a lot of you are starting to learn how um, exercise can almost be like your magic potion in order to uh, acclimate and transmute energy in your body that's not comfortable. A lot of people have anxiety about the holidays because of family members, because of everything that happens in the holidays that we have to work through, disagreements, all that kind of stuff. And so I want you guys to, to realize that everything that's, the only thing you have, as my grandfather used to tell us, the only thing you can control in your life is you and how you respond to things. And so by be, being able to take the appropriate approach to, to channeling your energy and your frustration is something that's really important that we learn through exercise. And so for all the Americans out there that are feeling a lot of anxiety about the holiday tomorrow, um, whether that's because a family member or whether that's because you have a lot of food to cook, whatever it may be, I hope that you partook in the 45-minute kickboxing to help get that stress out of your body so that your mind can be clearer. If kickboxing isn't appropriate for you, then I hope you took part in the Ashtanga Yoga. All right. So tomorrow is Thanksgiving. Once again, we went through this yesterday. So um, hopefully you guys uh, you saw yesterday's video about the whole um, journaling about fear and where maybe you've been afraid of yourself, all those kinds of things. So let's go ahead and look at Thursday because this is the big Mac daddy. And of course I will be releasing a video again tomorrow as well, but this is Thanksgiving for the Americans. And as I said, I really hope that you guys who are not Americans, that you partake in this holiday with us because Thanksgiving, if I'm going to be honest with you guys, this is my favorite holiday because you don't get give gifts on this holiday. There's no pressure to buy anything. It's just you're, you're sitting down and you're sharing a meal with friends and family. A lot of people here in the United States do like the day before Thanksgiving, they'll do like a Friendsgiving where they get together with their friends and have a potluck before they have to go spend the day with their family. And so I'm challenging our friends who live in other countries to try to kind of have a Friendsgiving, to try to, to partake in the beautiful aspects of this holiday. Because this is all about, again, fellowship, community, um, being with people you love, even if, you know, you can love someone but not like them. I think we have a lot of that with our family members. We love them, but we don't like them, right? Especially with the, the great awakening that's been on us these last couple of years. And so this can be a very triggering time. So I'm going to go ahead and walk you guys through Thanksgiving. And this will be a lesson for Christmas and any other holidays that you have coming up on how to manage shadow work challenge because shadow work challenge never breaks while you're also dealing with a huge event in your life. So happy Thanksgiving. This day, like many holidays, might require you to get up extra early to get your workout and journaling in. Please know that many people across the country are joining you at dark 30, as we call it in Ashtanga. We get up at dark 30 to do their workout to keep themselves sane for the holiday. I, even though all I have to do tomorrow, so as far as work is concerned tomorrow, being Thanksgiving as a holiday, all I'm going to be doing tomorrow is filming one of these update videos. That's it. Um, beyond that, I'm going to be at my aunt's house um, with my family. Stephanie is actually going to be joining my family and her son Tyler are going to be joining my family for Thanksgiving this year. So... So I don't really have much to do as far as work is concerned. However, I do have to use my kitchen to cook some stuff. So um, 
So I will be busy in the morning. So what does that mean for me? That means even though I could use tomorrow as a time to sleep in a little bit and then exercise, I'm going to be getting up at probably four to work out as well, just to make sure I get that in before the day starts. So I'm going to ask you guys, especially those of you who are cooking full meals, can you get up early tomorrow, 3.30, 4 o'clock, to make sure you get your workout in before the day starts? And this is super, 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 super important, okay? And if you've never done this before, if you've never worked out on a holiday, this is going to be a new experience for you, and hopefully a very positive one, all right? I know I love the Macy's Day Parade. I hope they're having it. I, I love the Macy's Day Parade. So I always want to be ready to go cooking and to be able to watch the beginning of the Macy's Day Parade. So I put here, if you have never gotten up early on a holiday to exercise, and this will be a new experience and challenge for you, I ask that you try real hard not to skip your workout this morning. Today, we'll have less challenges due to the holiday, but your exercise is top priority, not just for your sanity, but also for your digestive system. As many people know, not just Americans, but when we're on holidays, when we have a, a, a holiday, Christmas, Thanksgiving, whatever, come up, sometimes we're eating foods that we don't normally eat. Um, you know, a lot of rich foods, like for, for example, for tomorrow, I know there's going to be a lot of rich foods, a lot of, um, you know, uh, pineapple casserole, mashed potatoes, all that kind of stuff. And so if your system isn't used to that, it's going to take a toll on your system. Your system might go into a little bit of a shock. Friday, you might have a bit of a food hangover, which we're going to talk about tomorrow. Um, but if you exercise in the morning, it's going to help the digestive process. All right. It's going to really help you be able to digest foods that you're, it might, that might be hard on your body tomorrow, if that makes sense. Okay. Make your bed up. Today, you might lead a, eat a little bit later than 7 p.m., and that's okay because it's a holiday. Be flexible with this one today. Enjoy feasting with your loved ones. So the exercises you get to pick is either dance to sweat into the oldies, kickboxing, or Ashtanga yoga. I, I added sweat into the oldies because this brings a lot of joy to people. And so especially if you kickbox today, if you've got stress coming up with family tomorrow, maybe try to dance and sweat into the oldies to help kind of ignite that joy within you. Yeah. And um, and then, but if not, if you really feel like there's some anger coming up, do the kickboxing again. Yep. Totally up to you. This is you. You get to pick whatever you think is going to be best for you. Do the last, the five minutes of a cold, a cold shower. And then if you have uh, time, do the 15 minutes all minute meditation to really help ground you. All right. You really need to, to take that 15 minutes. Just to breathe, to settle in, let the vibration kind of move through you before you face the day. All right, so no food journal today. Don't worry about food journaling today because it is a holiday. We're not we're not out here trying to get people to be uh, have eating disorders. So if you today's a holiday, don't food food journal. Just leave it, okay? Um, unless you you're not participating in Thanksgiving, and then you're welcome to food journal if you want to. So journal to extra to ask yourself today or tonight after everything is done. Did you get up extra early to exercise? How did taking the time to exercise and meditate help you navigate the day? Did you notice a difference? Okay. Did the exercise help your digestion? Were there any uncomfortable situations you were in today? How did it go? Did you handle these situations differently because of the work you're doing on yourself? If you're not an American, did you have a meal with friends? How did it go? If you're not an American, how did reading this challenge for the Americans inform you for the next day, next holiday you have to experience? What did you observe from this? And then again tonight, I said you might stay up later than 10 p.m. tonight. And that's okay. Allow yourself to have fellowship and community with your friends and family. Tomorrow, you can observe how this day affects you. All right, guys. With that being said, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Again, any questions you have, ask me down in the comment section below. Um, I will be doing the first uh, asana class Zoom with our yoga intensive today. The next asana class for our yoga intensive will be on Saturday. And then, of course, we have our second Sunday class where it's the two-hour kind of lecture over philosophy. Um, soon, those the what new website will be up for uh, the next yoga intensive. And, um, and yeah, I'll be working on that 60-day challenge for January, guys. Um, have a wonderful day. For all of the Americans out there, you got this. Enjoy the, the day tomorrow, even if it's stressful. Don't, I heard, what was it, I guess, some reality show star said once, don't steal my sparkle. Don't let anybody steal your sparkle, right? When my parents were getting divorced, the pastor of our church told my mom, do not let, and he said my dad's name, steal your joy. Don't let anything steal your joy, all right? You are a bright light amongst a dark world and understand that your energy is potent. Work your energy out in the morning, work it out. 
settle yourself, ground yourself, and do not let anyone steal your sparkle. All right, you guys, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.